Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, February 4th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome to part two of this economic news bulletin, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you'd like to visit my website, it is www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I just posted a new poll up there. You can check that out. Um, and we're going to move on here. We left off with that last article. Uh, this bank executive took TARP money, never paid it back, and now he'll get $18 million if he's fired. The next up is from the Independent. Afghan elite plundered $900 million from leading bank businesses on brink of collapse after its funds were treated like personal accounts, says a uh, coterie of well-connected Afghan businessmen and politicians may have plundered as much as $900 million from the country's biggest commercial bank, three times the amount of earlier estimates and the equivalent of about 7% of Afghan's total uh, GDP. And we have Fed Chief Bernanke denies U.S. policy behind record global food prices. Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, has dismissed the idea that the central bank's policies are to blame for the rise in global food prices to a record high that helped trigger political unrest in Egypt. And, um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to blame it completely on Ben Bernanke, although I'm, you know, I don't agree with the, uh, with the Federal Reserve system. So, uh or money or currency that isn't backed by anything. Um, but I, I can't blame it all on uh, on his actions. I think that it was already in the making, um, mostly because of the economic takeover that, you know, that pre pretty much uh, took hold in 2008 with the bailout um, and the uh, stimuluses in, in 2009 and that. It says uh, Bernanke denies that Fed is stoking inflation and uh, pretty much the same thing. Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke rejected complaints by China and other developing economies that the U.S. policies are driving up global food and energy prices and instead pin the blame on accelerating growth in emerging markets and their inadequate response. He said, quote, I think it's entirely unfair to attribute excess demand pressures in emerging markets to U.S. monetary policy because emerging markets have all the tools they need to address excess demands in those countries. So there you go, that's the official answer. Mm -hmm. Fed is unlikely to raise interest rates for 12 months, Pimco's growth says. The Fed uh, is unlikely to raise interest rates for at least 12 months because the U.S. economy isn't generating enough growth to lower unemployment. Pacific Investment Management Company's Bill Gross said, and uh, keep moving here, credit card and interest rates near 60% as banks return to risky borrowers. This week's credit check average credit card APR is 14.72%. Interest rates for banks borrowing from the Fed is 0 to 0.25%. Look, Ben Bernanke is keeping asset prices higher than they otherwise would be. Said in the case you had any doubt about whether Ben Bernanke's quantitative easing is pumping up the stock market, take a look at this chart from Asha Bangalore at Northern Trust. The shaded areas are QE1 and uh, QE2. The red line is the S&P 500, so you can see it going down, the quantitative easing, and uh, it goes down and it comes back up, and then it starts to go back down again, and then here comes quantitative easing, and it goes right back up again. So it says, of course, this is beg the question, what will happen to stocks when QE2 ends? Pray hard for QE3. And um, we've already heard that uh, about QE3 coming uh, from the uh, National Inflation Association. Uh, U.S. jobless rate falls to 9%. Payrolls rise by only 36,000. The U.S. jobless rate unexpectedly fell in January to the lowest uh, level in 21 months, while payroll growth was depressed by winter storms. Then we have this, 20,000 military members, vets, faced foreclosure in 2010. More than 20,000 veterans, active duty troops, and reservists who took out special government-backed mortgages lost their homes last year, the highest number since 2003. Payrolls barely grew uh, or grow, but jobless rates plummet. Employment rose by merger, 36,000 jobs in January, far less than expected. A severe snowstorm slammed large parts of the nation, but the unemployment rate fell to its lowest level since April in 2009. So everybody celebrate. 1.2 million Americans quit seeking work since November of 2010. You can check this out. The link will be posted. It said uh, the February 2011 Employment Situation Report indicates that 228,000 young adults aged 20 to 24 found work in January 2011, but that 154,000 older individuals aged 25 and up were no longer counted as being part of the U.S. workforce. Meanwhile, teens aged 16 and 19 saw a mild improvement with 43,000 more counted as having jobs in January than in December 2010. 
Then you go down here, it says that recently the official unemployment rate has fallen so dramatically over the last three months span of time, even though the number of employed Americans hasn't meaningfully changed since March of 2010, is directly due to a very large number of Americans becoming discouraged and exiting the portion of the civilian labor force who are employed or are actively seeking work. He said, we'll see uh, that in the decline in the numbers of individuals counted as being unemployed. So here we go, finishing up uh, with this article. So it's not that the job situation is getting better so much as roughly 1.2 million Americans who were looking for work in November 2007 are no longer participating in any meaningful way in the U.S. job market. And that's what I was talking about before. Just because unemployment says it's down, it just means that there's less people collecting benefits because they can no longer collect them. But they're not, they're not working. So you can't fall for those uh, numbers that you're getting from the federal government. Employment report, it sucks. And uh, so you can go in there and check it out. And this guy really, uh, uh, really um, it goes through the charts and all that and lays it down. Uh, but for time's sake, I'm going to keep moving. The, un the employment gap between the educated and the uneducated is incredible. And uh, says the unemployment rate for those with less than a high school diploma is 14.2%. The unemployment rate for those with a college degree is 4.2%. And it says we're not going to waste our time uh, rehashing old questions about whether this means college self-selects for uh, employable people or whether it means that more people should go to college. Uh, we couldn't care less. It is remarkable divergence, however. And um, you go through uh, here, and that's basically people with a bachelor's degree uh, down here. It's around uh, 2.0. And you got less than a high school diploma up here uh, recently in 2010 at almost 16%. So... But uh, it's still not that easy to look for jobs. I have a bachelor's degree, and uh, I would have a pretty good stint of unemployment. So chart of the day, the scariest jobs chart ever, looks totally awful. There are some weird things going on in this morning's jobs report, but the headline number was a joke. And as such, the scariest job chart ever looks uh, horrid. It says, as you can see, via calculated risk, the pace of jobs recovery is not only in the line with the past recoveries, it's not even at the pace it was a few months ago. Then we have this from uh, Zero Hedge, persons not in labor force who want job now jumps to all time record, real unemployment rate at 12.8%. Probably the last chart to bury any doubt about just how truly horrible today's unemployment data was comes from a little observed data metric that showing the number of people uh, that are not in the labor force but who want a job now. The just hit, it looks here, uh, 6,643K, a jump of 431,000 from December, and that's the highest number in history. These are people that would uh, send the unemployment rate to about 12.8% if they were in the labor force, and as indicated, looking for a job, nothing else needs to be said. Persons not in uh, labor force who want a job now, and uh, you have uh, here basically in uh, March and uh, actually November, December of 2007, here at around 4,500, and now you have the number at 6,500 here in uh, late 2010. So, link will be posted. You can check it out. ADP, private sector edge jobs, private sector payrolls expanded at a solid pace in January, led by small business hiring, according to data released on Wednesday. And we have Britain's unemployment at its highest. Canada job creation four times as much as forecast unemployment increases. They have German joblessness falls to 18-year low, stoking fears of labor shortage. That's uh, Actually, I think the people in Germany um, are getting paid to procreate right now. Um, says here, war within nations, possible if joblessness continues. The head of the IMF has warned the weakened world economy could bring war to some countries. Uh, this is no big surprise, right? He said that the rising food and fuel prices in recent months had already hit poor countries and had already led to massive anti-government protests in Egypt and in Tunisia. So, and uh, you had, uh, who was it, uh, Gerald Salente, Mr. Trends Forecaster, uh, basically saying the same thing. Eight million in France face housing problems. France is facing criticism for the poor housing of millions of its residents with its recent measures blamed for intensifying inequality and promoting evictions, a report says. Then we have this from Press TV. British consume less energy. British people are consuming less energy due to a looming recession almost 30 years after energy consumption was rising among households, a new study has found. And uh, out there in China, some, a lot of people are freezing to death because of their new uh, environmentally friendly measures. 
uh, that the government's taking. And uh, here we go, E.L. Rothschild LLC acquires a majority stake in Weather Central LP. And it says here from the Business Wire that the company, a private investment company led by Chairman Sir Evelyn de Rothschild and CEO Lynn Forrester de Rothschild today announced the uh, signing of a definitive agreement to acquire 70% interest in the Weather Central LP, the world's uh, leading provider of interactive weather graphics and data services for television, web, and mobile. Weather Central's highly accurate and personalized forecasting offers business and consumers a truly unique uh, suite of science-driven weather information products. The company will continue to operate under CEO and founder Terry Kelly. And um, so you can go check that out. You know, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, if this really does have to do with actual weather, meteorologists and that, um, my my guess would be uh, uh, basically it has to do with the weather modification, right? Uh, because a lot of the, like this recent storm in that, uh, these meteorologists, yeah, they're doing their, they're doing their, uh, their work and trying to predict weather patterns and that and fronts, uh, but at the same time, there has to be some kind of system uh, that goes on uh, basically that the meteorologists are aware of when you know when they're spraying when there's spraying going on and they're modifying the weather because if they do that uh, you know standard meteorology I would imagine wouldn't apply right so you have to have these computer models uh, that spit out all this data telling you this is what's going to happen so maybe they know something Rothschild's rebrand drops investment bank after 200 years five years after its onslaught the financial crisis has claimed its highest or its latest high profile victim oh Nathan Mayer Rothschild he's a victim so and uh, it says here that they're uh, they're getting out of investment uh, banking because you know of the image um, you know basically there's people that profit off of all these crises and then uh, and then they play a victim and they say oh poor us people hate us because we're rich and because we steal from people and uh, a lot of fraud is carried out and no one ever really traces it back to us so we're going to get out of this business uh, and um, maybe because they know something that, like again maybe they know something that most of the people don't know maybe it's because this is dead right maybe they just they took everything that they possibly could and sucked it out of people that there really isn't much left there. So they're just going to move on into uh, into meteorology and, and, and weather modification uh, prediction. Pentagon reports billions of dollars in contractor fraud. The Pentagon paid hundreds of billions of dollars to defense contractors engaged in criminal or civil fraud, some cases paying the companies after they were convicted, according to a new defense department. Mexico supplies electricity to wintry Texas. Mexico's state electricity company on Wednesday started supplying electricity to the U.S. state of Texas, where demand shot up amid unusually cold temperatures and caused power outages. Again, that must be global warming. Blackouts hit Brazil's northeast states. At least eight northeastern Brazilian states lost power Thursday night after problems. An electric substation knocked out transmission lines and temporarily shut down generation capacity, disrupting travel for a few hours during the busy summer season. Electricity was restored to the region within about five hours. Brazil's Energy Minister Edison Labado said in a tele televised press conference, the official said problems at the uh, Gonzaga substation uh, likely caused by automatic shutdown in part of the national transmission grid, leading to a widespread drop in energy supply to the area. Then we have this. Borderland residents asked to limit use of natural gas. Texas Gas Service is continuing to experience uh, natural gas pressure challenges in certain neighborhoods due to low pressure and pipes associated with weather events. Value-added tax. Senate weighs a tax reform Reagan once shunned as President Ronald Reagan was not enthused by the idea of a value-added tax in America. Uh, but in the Senate hearing week this week, it says a tax reform experts are pushing for it, and it's the same thing that they have out there in the UK and Britain, and they just increased it recently. Warlike U uh, U.S. regime drains tax dollars, so instead of uh, just cutting back on killing people and um, p allowing those companies to profit off of it, um, we're just going to keep that going, and we're going to scale back on useful social programs. It says an investigative journalist has described the U.S. as a warlike regime, which uses its citizens' uh, taxes to bully other countries. Around 50% of every U.S. tax dollar goes to its military. So there you go. And it says here, high police pay fuels Nassau's squeeze. The average uh, salary of a sworn in police officer gets $107,000. Ten ginormous high school stadiums that were brought with ta uh, bought with your tax dollars, and one of them is from uh, Friday Night Lights, whatever. And uh, last one, page you go meters will uh, see internet users charge per gigabyte. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.